Green is great. Green is good. Green is the plate when we eating good. Green is grass. Green is cash. Green is life. Green is growth. But most of all, green is go. And with that being said, let's chop it up and let's get this green up, man. Yeah. yeah, okay. My name is Jay Green. This is Jay's Green Room, also known as Green Room TV. Clocking in, locking in, checking in with Carl Crawford. Carl Crawford, the 1501 King. That's right. For sure, That's for sure. Time. Yeah, yeah. So my goal is to give like a timeline of understanding. You know what I'm saying? Right. You were a professional athlete, Major League Baseball, right. transitioned into... Uh, an executive, music executive, mm -hmm. 1501 certified. Right. Where you from? I'm from Houston, Texas. Fifth Ward, Hardy Street to be exact. 1501. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm just like any other kid born on the north side of Houston. They just wanted to do something with their life. Right. And not, you know, straying the other way, straying away of all the other things that was around you. Uh, sports was a good way for me to just stay focused and, uh, you know, channel all my energy into doing something positive. And, uh, you know, I just tried to do the best with what I had. For sure. When you were coming up in Fifth Ward, did you ever feel like you had a lot of distractions as far as staying focused away from the street life? Well, I mean, you know, everybody's in the street, basically. All your friends, you know, like everybody is like, you know, somewhere hanging out somewhere and you see everything that goes on but the group of guys that I hung with coming up during my time you know sports kind of really helped us we had um Salvation Army Boys Club where um we can go where they come pick us up from our elementary school and um we go over there and play basketball and you know do all the little things throughout the season football whatever and uh that seemed to keep us away from you know all the gang stuff that was going on or you know, around dope from dope fiends and stuff like that. You know. Straight up. So you you kind of you kind of like one of the very few people who feel like you've lived kind of that thing about like you know what I'm saying how nothing it comes from something right yeah, come yeah. from nothing. You know what I'm saying? Um, just just wanted to like have a better life. You know, I had a chance to experience when I um when my coach came and got me. Coach Bond, Michael Bond's dad, he came and got me. And, you know, took me out to his house when I was a kid and I was playing for him. Showed me his house for what the first age, what time. What was that? So I might have been like nine, okay. nine, ten, something like that. And, uh, you know, he took me to his house and, you know, as soon as we pulled up to the driveway, immediately I knew that's what I wanted, you know. Um, and I set out to do that. Um, I'm from the same neighborhood as Jay Prince and George Foreman and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Um, so I remember I remember playing football in the streets one time, and so I, I remember just the reddest Porsche just pulled up while we was playing street ball, and um, sure and behold, George Foreman gets out the car. Yeah. Now mind <laughs> you, now mind you, you know I played with, I grew up with all his cousins and stuff, and they they say, um, yeah, that's my cousin all the time. That's our cousin. You know, you don't ever see it, so you like whatever. You don't believe it, but this one day when he pulled up. And got out that car. I mean, I just, I couldn't even, like, I just was still. It was like I was stuck. You know what I'm saying? This car was just so red. He had this bright bald head getting out this car. And he was just calling them all by their nicknames. You know? Yeah. And I was like, I was like, damn. Like, I was so starstruck. And immediately I knew that that's what I wanted right there. I wanted to be able to be like that. And be able to drive back in my neighborhood and do the same thing. And that, that's a blessing because, you know, a lot of times in the hood, they, it's the... It's the dope dealer, it's the right. pimp, it's that person. Right. But so when you seen George Foreman hopping out that that car, right? Was that, that changed my life? Was that before your coach took you to his house or after? Oh man, I think that was before. Oh. You know, that probably so was that's before. the first time it really. That was the first time it really just dawned on me that I wanted like something other than what was what we had over there. You know, up to that point, I never saw nothing like that. Straight you up. know, so and then you know the. Coach Bond thing came because I'm still in the hood when I saw George Foreman. When I when Coach Bond came and got me, I went to other parts. Of I went to the other part of Houston yeah. that I never saw Umbro at the time, and I yeah. was just like, you know, I couldn't believe my buddies. They had their own rooms, they had backyard <laughs> and stuff like. I never saw none of that. Yeah. Me and my brother shared a room, with one bed. You know, you had a so, lot of brothers and sisters, just one. No, brother. just one brother. Older? Yeah. No, younger. Younger. Okay. Yeah. You know, but sure, we shared a bed all the way up to middle school. Mm. So, um, and that's only because I left to go to stay with my daddy. But man, you know, I okay. had you know I was I went and saw a house with 
bell rooms, pool tables, and backyards, yeah. basketball. Yeah. I was like, damn, this is the life right here, you know. Like it's funny because he like always thought I had this wonderful life because you know I guess when you in the suburbs, you know. You dropping a kid off in the hood, you know, all you see is movement. You know, you just a kid running. Like, even myself, I wouldn't go in my house. I'd jump out the car. You visit your dad? No, like, when my boy Michael Bourne, his dad, oh, okay. you know, he, you know, they drop me off. And he'll be like, man, we want to stay at your house. I'm like, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, tell your mom, tell your mom, ask your mom, can we swap places with him, man? <laughs> I would gladly let you stay over here. That was But, up. you know, um, you know, that's how it was. That's what's up, man. Okay, uh. Would you consider yourself, okay, younger, coming in from that age, going into, like, junior high, right. would you consider yourself, like, one of the most elite, like, athletes? Athletes? Yeah, in that I area coming? I was. I just thought, you know, I'm always credit myself, especially from that neighborhood over there. I just, you know, I would take on anybody. It didn't mm -hmm. matter, even from a youngster. Like, I, my dad was good at basketball, so he had me on the court, like, as a kid, like, as, like, a two, three-year-old. I was on court with grown men, so mm -hmm. by the time I got... Seven, you know, six, seven grade. It was, you know, I've been dominating <laughs> for a long time, you know. <laughs> All right. So, at what age would you say you realized first realized that hey, I'm a top athlete? Man, when I was like eight or nine years old, we was at the Salvation Army Boys Club. You know, we we had basketball over there, bitty basketball. We used to play, mm -hmm. and you know they had eight and under ten and under twelve and under. And, you know, I, I always was younger than all the kids I hung with. All my buddies was older than me. Right. So they tried to put me on an eight and under team. And I was like, nah, you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> my brother played eight and under. Yeah, you've been playing. So, and I play with these niggas every day. You know what I'm saying? And, and I know what I be doing with them. So I'm not playing on them. So I told them I wasn't playing. They, let me, they put me up with the ten and under team. And I was the youngest person on the team. And they can all tell you. I was at age. And that was eight, basketball. Yeah, and that was basketball. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, basketball was the first sport I played. That was my next question. Yeah, you know, so basketball was the first sport I played because my dad played basketball. You had more love for basketball? Or? Yeah, you know, you going you know, come out the hood, you good. You got love for it. So, yeah, I loved, mm -hmm. I loved all sports, really. I just like to be active. Mm -hmm. But um, basketball, then, uh, then it was soccer. I played soccer. I played yeah. soccer in college. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was um, football and baseball. So baseball was actually the last one you got into. I'm trying to remember, you know what? Baseball might have been. You no, know, it might have been baseball, football. I think football might have been the last one because yeah. at the time I wasn't old enough to play football for what he had just started yet. Oh. So um, okay, yeah, and football was actually so baseball was second because I had an uncle that played minor league baseball. Okay, and um, you know he used to come home and. And from the, from the season, and you know what I'm saying, I see him in his uniform and stuff because he'll still play like local ball around and stuff like that, take me with him. So that's where I picked up baseball at. Okay. All right, so play basketball was your first sport. Football right. was your – baseball kind of football, even soccer. You know, with with that always being a top – like top athlete comes that like lifestyle. Right. When, it, when did first did you start feeling like, okay, I'm the popular dude, I'm the – you know, like the, that. Kind of I, don't know, I don't know. I didn't. The popular dude. I don't know. We just. I don't know. I just always felt like I was real humble with it. I wasn't like too like. That's one thing I'm I know. Man type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Like all my partners, we was good. You know, but on the inside, yeah, I thought I was better than everybody. But I always gave everybody their mutual respect, like how we won. You know, and stuff like that. But you know, you know this shit in elementary because you winning the MVPs and yeah. stuff like that. Winning so, the foot races, yeah, yeah. you know, you winning. Yeah, yeah. So you, so you, you never know. been cocky. Yeah, I try not to be because okay. you know, that just ain't how we did it over there. You know, hey, you win the game and you get on them like that. That's how you show who was what, and, and that determined a lot what was going on. Uh, okay. And, you know, so come yo, yo yo play on the actual game. You know, okay. you know them street games. You know, I I don't play all type of hard games. Corners, you know, outside hoops, like, I ain't, it wasn't nothing. Like, it, you say, let's hoop, we hooping, we doing whatever, you know. Uh -huh. Did you ever, ever battle with that thing coming from people? Would you ever battle with that thing of ever thinking about going into the street? Nah, I just was just real just confident play. in what I had going That's on. You know what I'm saying? I um, I played three sports, and I just said, I just, I, the way I played them all, I just, 
I said, I got to win in one of them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's no way. I just didn't think it was no way possible. So the early that I could lose. Was kinda... Yeah, I was like, I, I was already, I'll be telling my partners, hey, look, we're going to be freshmen. We're going to be rookies of the year. Like, <laughs> we had it all planned out, mapped yeah. out already. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. So um, that's the type of stuff I was on um, coming up. That's a beautiful thing yeah. when, it, when it when it comes to fruition. I mean, you know, it's a different sport. We were talking about basketball at the yeah. time. but uh, You never thought baseball was going to hit. Never thought baseball. <laughs> even, even going into high school, like as you got older. No, I'll tell you what I thought. When I really started taking it serious, uh, I think it was my been my tenth grade year, yeah. and I walked into a store, a local, a, a regular corner store in the neighborhood. And when I walked in, I saw this guy Carl Everett had just got fifty million dollars from the Boston Red Sox. Base, base, that's funny, Boston too. Yeah, but baseball pays the most. Yeah, other than I mean, know. basketball pays pretty good too now. Yeah, yeah. as the years yeah. been progressing, basketball yeah. been a motherfucker. Yeah, they doing good. So, but at that time. At that time, I thought, I didn't think, I thought I was just one of the best baseball players in the 10th grade, too. So when I saw $50 million, I was like, Lord. I, told, I remember going to football practice right after that and saying, yeah, coach, we cool with all this football stuff, but hey, I'm going to give baseball a real shot. You know what I'm saying? It's easy I'm just, on your body. Yeah, I just, I, told them, I remember telling them that, like, that day. So. Yeah, for sure. Baseball also offers like the longest contracts, easy on your body. Longer contracts, more games, more yeah. games, though. more games. That's yeah. a, that's the thing. It's a long haul. Yeah, <laughs> now we are gonna get into that. So pay pay me the picture of what it was like when you first, when when the major league first started contacting you. I know you got drafted at seventeen. Um, um, I mean they just come out. To my games, you know, they started coming. Scouting. Well, see, like, baseball was the only sport that I played all four years hmm. on varsity. Like, I never, I, I played, like, four games on the JV team. And this was in the ninth, this, uh, this was as a ninth grader, hmm. you know. So, I started, I was a four-year letterman in baseball. So, they pretty much started after my ninth grade year. Okay. Yeah, I was. You went to uh, Wheatley? No, I went to Jeff Davis. Jeff Davis. They call yeah. it Northside now. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they be switching up the names and yeah, shit. Yeah, man, them confetti names had to go. <laughs> All right, so, okay, so look, they, they started coming to your games. When when it game came time to become drafted, what did they call your house? Yep, they yeah. give you a call on the phone, and they tell you, hey, you you being drafted by such and such team. And How did that feel when you got that call? I mean, it was just great to feel like you got, um, you, you got drafted, but it was a little disappointing on draft day because... Uh, I ended up being the first pick in the second round. I thought That's I early. was gonna go. I thought I was gonna go in the top ten picks. That's still early. Know? Baseball has how many rounds in the draft? They got like fifty some rounds. Exactly. You know but you know, still, you know, I think I just, I mean, I just had a scholarship to Nebraska. I'm like one of the top yeah. athletes in the country. Like I'm like second round. You know what I'm saying? So you got a scholarship to Nebraska for football. Yeah. Quarterback. Yeah. And then also UCLA. Well, no, I, didn't, I stopped playing basketball my junior year, but they yeah. was recruiting me at the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, I was getting I letters that, from I was getting letters from Okay, okay. You know I read that you had a commitment to UCLA. No, I didn't. Oh, I didn't have a commitment because I didn't play. Okay. I didn't even play my senior year. I, 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 stopped, I, I, I stopped playing basketball because, um, because you know, I wanted to play a full season of baseball. I right, never right. played a full season of baseball. Right, right. And people be thinking I'm exaggerating with my, with my basketball stuff. I'm gonna post it tomorrow. I'm gonna you show, pull it up, man. Show it on camera, show, whatever. Let me show you this real quick, man. Real quick, while you looking for that? No, it's do you right still here. do you still got some hoop game? Not really, right? <laughs> now, I ain't hooped in a while. You know what I'm saying? But I do have a full court basketball in my backyard. I'm oh, gonna get man, back in. that's what's up. I got one. Of so, them, I got one of them joints. You put the water in the okay, bottom. So, <laughs> here we go, right here. All right, so check this out, right here. My sons, they just don't even see it at all. Like, they ain't never saw me even pick up a basketball really. So, they, <laughs> they just like, yeah. whatever, daddy. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I've been looking for the video. But if you see on the left, what does that say, if y'all can see? Oh, let me focus on that. Okay, hold on. Tell me if you can read what that say. On the left, which one? What the first name say on the left? Oh, yeah, we see it. What did it say on the first name? Hold on. You know, I got glasses. It says, that's your small as fuck. Yeah. The first name, it says, the first name says Rashard Lewis, and the second one says 
Carl Crawford. Okay, now, uh, now who is Rashard Lewis? Rashard Lewis is Seattle Supersonics. One of them, he's drafted okay. out of high school. Right, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. And what does that say? Oh, that says, that. That says, it says Carl Crawford next. Exactly. And, and guess what? That was, that. what year does it say? Uh, 90, let me see. What year is this? 98. 98. So he was, that's 99 he was drafted. No. That's ninety nine. I graduated ninety eight. Oh, he was, he was drafted. drafted. Okay. So that's so I'm telling you to say that is because that was my junior year. I wasn't even a senior. And you was ranked next. Okay, okay, so, okay. And I All didn't right. even play my senior. Year. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Like I quit basketball. I was that type of player. Like so, I'll be posting it on the ground so they can see that you know. And then you didn't see the steals on the other side. Like then my partner was number you four. You more of an offensive. Everything. Everything. I, just, I just was a guard, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you about, 6'1"? Yeah, 6'1", 6'2". Okay. That's yeah. like uh, Steve Francis, maybe? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, like I said, though. I suppose to have Steve Francis went, coming for he went to the He went to the He went to the league. He went to the NBA in 98, then I went to the MLB in, in, in 99. Okay. So, we two teenagers riding around the city. Um, two teenagers riding around the cities with Lincoln Navigators on 20s. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what's up, man. That was, so, so, yeah. so, how was it that you was getting in the money like that? Was it agents hooking you up with or? the money? Yeah. Not nah, the team. You know they pay you. You're yeah. signing bonus. You I know got what I'm you. saying? I got and you. your agent might get you like card deals where you sign a few cards or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so being an athlete like that, you probably you was always had prowess with the women. With the who? With the women. Nah, well, yeah, not problems, you know. Just, no, I said prowess, meaning ability, skills, smooth swagger with the ladies. I mean, you know, we just when you when you when you were in high school, fifteen, seventeen, like that, you just yeah, you probably feeling yourself a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I probably was, but uh, you know, it was just you young. You just being on that young nigga stuff. So that's that humble confidence. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, so look, you okay. young man, you just thugging. Right. You're you know. right though, you're right. Because when I think back to the shit I used to do. Yeah. Okay, so check it out. So you're 17, you get drafted by the Tampa, Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Oh. Second round. Uh, you go to the minor leagues first. Right. Right? When you went to the minor leagues, it wasn't what you expected, was it? Mm -mm. How much did you sign for at first? A million and a half. Signing bonus? Right. Okay. No, we had a whole signing bonus. Okay, so it was the contract was 1.6, 1.7, 1.5. 1.5. Yeah. So after taxes, how much did you get? Well, you know, you got to pay your taxes every year, and they break the contract down for you, you know what I'm saying? So every year you might get paid this amount of dollars, like your first check, $400,000 or something like that. You got to pay taxes on it for that year, so it ain't like you get the whole bonus. Mm -hmm. And one year I was a dual sport player, and I had signed a scholarship to Nebraska. Hmm. So that means that the team can can divide your contract up into five years because, you know, you was a threat to quit school hmm. and go back to, you know what I'm saying, you was a threat to quit baseball and go back to school at any moment. So they want to make sure they kept you there. Them they, teams, they're they going to cover their ass. Yeah, they did that because, well, they got burnt a few times with a few guys hmm. when they first started. Uh, a couple of guys signed, got big sign bonus, then got the money, then the next year they yeah. go back to school and play football. You know, mm -hmm. I think Josh Booty was one of them, somebody like that. Okay. I think uh, Ricky Williams did got drafted, did it like that. You know, Cedric Benson. Ricky Williams, Cup, Cup, Cup. yeah, uh, you know. Okay, so you get drafted, you get the one point seven. When you get that, you don't get paid to be in the minor. But you get the sign. No, you get you get paid, but it's like a, a per a, deal. A, yeah, no, it's probably like every two weeks, but it's like. It's like depending on what level you on, you know what I'm saying? Like if you an A ball, rookie ball, like rookie ball, when I first got the pay was like probably like eight hundred dollars every two weeks. Oh, something like, like that. That's you know like what I'm saying? Gig. You know what but I'm you, you got the sign of bonus ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. you still got that money in the bank. So but you know, most guys don't get a sign of bonus. So if you sign for like like let's take a Latin guy for instance, when he comes, he might only sign for like fifty thousand yeah. dollars. You know what I'm saying? That's and that's gotta make that last uh -huh. you know what I'm saying, until he make it to the major leagues or until he go up. Mm -hmm. And get you know how you pay in the minor leagues. Okay, so so when you got that original signing bonus, right. what was the first thing you bought? I bought a house and a, a car for me and my mom. Okay, so I shared the kind of what the house and the car. Yeah, yeah, we did. What you kind know, of car? I'm just seventeen, man. Yeah, for real. <laughs> so what, what kind of car though? 
I bought a, uh, a Lincoln Navigator and I bought a Mercedes Benz. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. Oh, you know. <laughs> you know they say they say the number one consumer of Mercedes Benz in in America is black women. So you bought your mama. Yeah, uh, Mercedes. I know she love that motherfucker. Cause black women love that Mercedes. I know. Uh, that's what the one they tell you to get. Yeah, for real. The best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. All yeah. right. So look, moving forward, you get that sign of bonus. You go into the league. You know what I'm saying? How long? Matter of fact, how long were you in in the minor league? I was in the minor league for like two and a half years, yeah. three, someone like that. Yeah. Okay. So how would you how would you judge your overall experience in the minor league? It's just. I mean, it's weeded. It's weeded. It's, it's set up to weed out the week. You know what I'm mm. saying? So it's designed for you to quit. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't want you if you can't go through that. So um, I just, I just channel my hood living. You know what I'm saying? That's when it came <laughs> back. That's when it. That's when it, all that came back into play. You know, it's like all that stuff that you went through in the hood and every day mm. trying. Like you had to apply it quick. You know what I'm saying? Like I caught on quick because it just seemed like. I was right back where I started. Like a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, because it was the, the, from what I've known and from what yeah. I've heard. The you know, when you move up, it get better. But like yeah. rookie ball, where I was at, a ball, that's like, Shh, man, I'm, I'm living right on next mm -hmm. to the projects in some places. And what do you play? 150 games? 150 games. 150 yeah. games. Yeah. So, did you ever have a point where you was going out, partying, and nothing? It was just all good. That was the thing. Like, good enough for me, right? I was too young for everything. So, all my teammates might be a little older or something. You know, can get in places I couldn't go. You know what I'm saying? So I, I never really partied in the minor leagues. I, mean, I might go out That's every once in a while. You know, you know what I'm saying? Say that money. I, you know, I just I had business on my mind. I had one one objective, and that was to get to the major leagues because in 1999 niggas didn't know about the minor leagues really. Mm. So you'll have somebody come and say, "Damn man, I seen Tampa Bay on TV. You know where you was at? I ain't see you. You know, I'm like." Yeah, yeah. Nigga, I'm in the minor leagues. I ain't So you know and that used to just irritate me more yeah, than yeah. everything. So it just made me want to work harder to get to the major league. I just got so tired of coming home and somebody saying, "Yeah, I saw Tampa Bay on the TV. I ain't see you, bro." Yeah. Like I thought you said, I thought you, later, though, I thought you, you said you was on the team, man. I yeah. <laughs> Twenty one years later, them niggas know where to be found. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly, but it just it just really made me work harder because they motivated. You know what I'm saying? I used to just be like, "Dang, man!" You know what I'm saying? I want to get that bad. I'm tired of these niggas saying, "That's a beautiful thing." You know, thing, man. you know, I'm I'm I ain't on the real team. You know, For sure, man. <laughs> man, fuck them niggas, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so going in, you get your sign of bonus. You know what I'm saying? You on the minor league. You spent two years minor league. Yeah, two and a half years. Two and a half. Yeah. So when you get that call up to go to Majors, and you're still for Tampa Bay. Mm. How did you feel when you got that call up? I was just excited, you know what I'm saying? Company. Like one of the one of the best feelings I ever had to the date getting that call because it just seemed like all that work from like like nine years old to now had just paid off, you know. Yeah. But uh, it was short lived because as soon as I got there, they were like, "Yeah, it's yeah, it's easy, it's hard to get here, but it's even harder to stay." So whatever all that thinking about how good, how hard, and trying to dream about you know um oh man i can't believe i got here you better get focused and figure out how you're gonna stay so you know that was what i was on okay what was the hardest part about the transition if you can think of one thing specific to the major leagues yeah really wasn't nothing because you know um i mean for the living wise or the game part just anything oh, in the game yeah you know you go to get big leaguers now yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what i'm saying like you in the game like yeah. these people Making millions too, you know what I'm talking about, and they shoot, they trying to get it just like you is. So it's like, shoot, man, you had to come up there and make some quick adjustments because you got a lot of stuff that I was getting away with that you might get away with in the minor leagues. You can't get away with up there, okay. so you just had to tighten things up a little, a little bit, get a little bit smarter, and just you know move different. That's real. Yeah. So when you signed to the uh, majors, you got a new contract. Uh, well, you sign a rookie deal, you know, you make it's the minimum, limited. you make the minimum to your third year in the league, then you go to arbitration if a team don't lock you in, but you know, I did well my first two years that a team locked me in, my first two years in the major league, so um, sure, I didn't never get to go to arbitration and do all that stuff. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I just, they just had me mine <laughs> at the gate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. okay, so 2003 yeah. or 2002 kind of, um, that's when you started. So how long did you play for Tampa Bay? Nine years. Nine years? Yeah. And from being a fan of baseball and understanding baseball and even doing my research, 
I know that that's your 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 golden years. Yeah, nah, golden yeah, you know, them were my best years. You know, um, that was the team that drafted me. I was comfortable there. I loved playing in Florida, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, just everything was just just you know tailor made for a player like me up in Florida. So I loved it there. Yeah, that's what's up. When you were in Tampa Bay in those nine years, did you ever have the thought of like? Foresight, looking forward, when I retire, I want to start a music business. Uh, or when yeah. did that come? Well, that came one time, like, when, uh, yeah, so uh, I got the idea when a guy I knew, um, when I figured out a guy I knew was, was managing uh, um, Paul Wall and those guys. And so that's when the thought kind of first crossed my head when, um, you know, when I realized that he had that type of end right there. To the entertainment business, I always wanted to know how to just get into it, but it's like a, you know, it's hard to crack if you don't know nobody. So um, I started thinking about it then, and this was like in 2008 mm -hmm. when ideas started coming to my head, and um, you know, just always knowing the back of my mind that if I wanted to get into the music business, that, that that's how I go about doing it. For sure, you gotta, you know, what I'm saying, music <coughs> connect. <coughs> yep. For sure. All right, so you're in Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay's your golden years, from 2002 to 2000, I guess, one, what would you say was your highest, highest point, the, from your greatest memory? From, from 2000 to what? Basically, when you started playing for Tampa Bay professionally, uh -huh. to the time that you got traded to, well, not traded, Boston. you got signed. So, the Boston? Yeah. What was your highest point? Up to that point? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we went to the World Series. Yeah. Uh, 2008 against Philly. Uh, I made the MVP of the World uh, All Star Game uh, one year. Yeah. Um, you know we um, I stole six bases in the game. Top made tied a major league record. You so, actually led the league in stolen bases. I think about yeah a few times too. About yeah. maybe three out of five years, maybe yeah. four. Well, yeah, I was leading it every year. You know yeah. what I'm saying for a while. So so you was kind of fast. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, you <laughs> got to be fast to, to win the stolen base title. Like a motherfucker, for, for sure. real. That's no easy shit. And in triples, you know, yeah. I don't believe in leading stolen bases and triples. For sure, for so, sure. So, um, that's what's up, man. You know, just real exciting, you know what I'm saying? At that time, you know, I was considered like one of the Michael Vicks of the game. With yeah. Just with that electrifying speed. Yeah. Where, you know, as soon as I run first base, the whole stadium stand up, mm -hmm. you know, because they ready to see how you finna run on those bases. Yeah. And so... That's what it was. For sure, man. Uh, okay, so in that time period, what about in 2004 when you played the All-Star game? Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting it. I forgot. Yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah 2004 All-Star game. That was definitely one of my highlight moments, too, because like I said, I had just got to the league. You know, it was like my second full season in the league. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just like, man, you know, normally guys, it'd be hard to make it that early in the league. So... I just was like, man, I just want to try to work hard because I knew the game. I knew it was a long shot, but I knew that it was the, the All-Star game was in Houston and I wanted to go. Yeah. You know, so 2004, I just, you yeah. probably early 20s. Yeah, so Came I back just, home, played in front of your people. Yep, came back. Mm -hmm. Whole family was there, you know, shared that experience with everybody. Uh, you know, and it was just good to be able to play in front of the home crowd. Yeah. I struck out, but I was just so <laughs> like... I was just so amped up and I was swinging at anything, you know, I was just trying to, I was just trying to <laughs> Man, get a homer. <laughs> I feel you though. Listening to you, I just want to take a pause to commend you because cause you come off as of a very humble, a very chill person, you know what I'm saying? And just thinking about, you know, from 17, moving so fast, making that kind of money, it, it's, I want to commend you because it's dope that you're able to maintain such a, a right. persona, kind of chill and be, yep. be humble down to earth. I mean, you know each time, man. You know what I'm saying? Man? You know what I'm saying? Ain't no up, pressure. Ain't no pressure. You could, you could be you like know? Antonio Brown. <laughs> could be, but you know that ain't each time, right yeah, there. Yeah, that's not you. you. That's no. not you. For no. sure. For sure. <laughs> okay. So now we, yeah. I want to move on to when things got a little turbulent for you. Right. Nine years, Tampa Bay. Then you, you wasn't traded, but you, your contract was over. Right. And you signed a new contract. In Boston, Massachusetts. Right. Shout out to Kim So Major. Yeah. <laughs> that was just a, that was just a you know that was a turbo real turbulent yeah, yeah, time yeah. for me right there. Uh, you know I went from the sunshine in the Florida uh, to to 
cold weather up east, man, and, that, and that just ain't no joke. You know, it was just a whole different type of ball game up there yeah. that, um, you know, I just wasn't ready for. And I never could rebound from the, the lick that I took the first year there. Okay, so, so in your first year there, what was the main lick you used to feel like? Just struggled the whole time. It was the first time that I just performance everything. Yeah, just struggled. Like I couldn't, I couldn't get in the groove the, at all. You know, but it like, makes sense though. though. Yeah. The climate being different, well, I mean, athletes y'all got cold. Everything going. different. You know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, everything so tight up there, and it's just the media is like no other. You know, and um, the fans is I heard it's just the fans like it's just it's just everything. But most people know what they what they going into. When they go up there, you know, I should have known better, but I know we were just looking at the at the contract at the time, so mm -hmm. uh, I didn't really factor in all those other things that came with it. When, when you, at that time, when Boston signed you, was was Tampa Bay trying to re-sign you? No, nah, they okay. was, yeah, they, you know, they offered me like $60 million or something like that. I mean, I, I don't want to just say it like it ain't nothing, because, yeah. you know, that's a lot of money to people, but my, my, my value at the time... Was I was far from that, you know, and, um, you know, as a guy that, you know, played the, for nine years and helped build the program, you know, that was just like an insult, really. Mm. So, we just moved on. For sure. So, okay, Boston was a difficult, turbulent period from you, right. for you. I know that first, first of all, from researching and being a fan of baseball. Um, but it also paid you what you felt like you was worth. Right. You know what I'm saying? The pay the contract was how much? Do you mind saying? One hundred and forty-five million dollars. I, I I thought it was more than that, about two hundred. No, it was it was one forty-five. Okay, yeah. one forty. That's still but at that time it was a record. That's real. Okay, you so you like, like you like Kevin Garnett? Yeah. Well, for like <laughs> speed guys, you know, at that time okay. you know, like speed guys who just who was known for just speed, you know, yeah. they weren't getting a hundred million dollars. For sure, you know? yeah. for sure, man. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you got that contract. How long did you play for Boston? One and a half years, I got traded. So how long was the contract? Seven years. Seven years, yeah. okay. And that's and that's also what I, you know, going back to what I say, baseball, they get long contracts. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and what year was it that you got? 2011. 2011. Yeah. Back, backpedaling a little bit. While you was, it's probably still while you was in Tampa Bay. But like I would say around the 2008. Right. Wanted to do that too early, uh, the next decade. Right. They had a problem with steroids, drug use. Right. Baseball players, from what I know, always characterized by like chewing tobacco. Mm -hmm. Even you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I tried it the first day I put when I like some shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was like, you know, just like like you say, that's the stigma about yeah. it. So I remember putting some in here. I remember damn near fainting and passing out. That shit crazy. I yeah, never I never did it again. Like ever after that. That's what's tobacco. up. Tobacco. Fuck around, and lose your whole jaw or something. Man. Yeah. But did, were you ever privy to see a lot of people kind of like sector-wise? Steroids. Steroids, yeah. Yeah, no, nah, I never saw it because, you know, I just never had to take it. That was you that very Bonds yeah, kind of yeah. era. Yeah, so I didn't really, I didn't never really see it. But, uh, you know, kind of had, you heard about it. You yeah. heard the stories and stuff like that. But I never actually saw nobody do it. And the suspensions that come with getting caught. Yeah, like... Like a year suspension when I paid two second time like that's more risking games, a lot of money. Yeah, third time like you out for the year. Mm. Yeah, you know. But if you, uh, I mean, but like I like I say, you know what I'm saying. If you fit a play for a contract, right, and you know that you only gonna get suspended for one year, you know what I'm saying. Okay, you finna put up numbers to get a six year contract. Mm. So. What's what's being suspended when you? I still got the other five that I'll, I'll be cleaning and get off of it, yeah. and then you know get my money. So that, 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 you know that's, that's how. <laughs> that's like okay, like yeah. let's say somebody from Dominica or Colombia, one right, of the Spanish right. countries. Yeah, they come from a country to where fucking twenty thousand is like. Yeah, they'll take a risk on. Gonna take it, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like here, they gonna take a risk. Everybody gonna take a risk, man. Especially coming from them countries where, yeah. you know, you don't have much, and so a lot of them don't even go to school, and they just play baseball all day from the age of like 10, 11. So you know, yeah, they gonna do whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. Okay, when Jose Canseco was saying, was telling everybody, that's the reason why he said he just he wanted to be the best player he could. Jose Canseco really he, liked he the first Tekashi. Like, he opened it up. Yeah. <laughs> I think he had like five home runs to get or something, and they blackballed him. They wouldn't let him get it. He, 
Uh, okay. Man, before I, I, I go deeper on to the Boston situation and your transition into music, right. quick question randomly. Who's the greatest player you ever played with? Play with? Or against? Man, I mean, I'm always getting a nod to like um, Manny Ramirez, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. Ken Griffin Jr., Big Poppy. Yeah. One of those type of guys. I'm trying to see who I play with. Manny, uh, no, uh, Clayton Crenshaw, probably yeah, yeah. one of the best pitchers, you know what I'm saying, I ever played with. Yeah. Um, Did you ever play with Pedro Martinez? No, nah, I played against him. Okay, he mm -hmm. played for Boston. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. He had that shit with yeah, him. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> I played. <laughs> Pedro was that nigga, though. Yeah, he was. That nigga. But, but he got, was. I remember he got jumped on the mound. He hit, hit niggas with the pitch. Yeah, man. Yeah. He used to do that type of shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But 2011, you went to Boston. Okay. Yeah. All right. You already had the thought of starting a record label or whatever. Right. You know what I'm saying? Boston wasn't too great. Right. One of probably, probably your most turbulent part in your life. Right. From the way you describe it. Right. Always been kind of the man. Yeah. You get traded to, to L.A. for the Dodgers. Right. LA Dodgers before you retire was kind of like your revival. Right. Right, right. So mm -hmm. 2011, you get to LA. Uh, no, got, 2012. 12. Like I traded 2013 was my first year. Okay, okay. Because you were injured at first. Yeah. For sure. But mm -hmm. then you kind of got back to where you was the base yeah. stealing king. Right. 2014, everything. I got back. You know what I'm saying? To myself. Then 2015 was a lot of ups and downs. And then that's when. I retired in 2016. Okay. Yeah. Being such being such a humble, chill, laid back, H Town kind of guy. In 2012, around the time when you were first injured, of course, is when you started Dave Evelyn Desire. Right. Okay. Uh, y'all together for what? Maybe a couple years. Uh, no, we was together for four years. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Had a child together. Right. For sure. What type of person would would you describe Evelyn as personally? Not from what people see on TV, but. Oh, in the house, man, the house is just, you know, cool, just, yeah. play, you know what I'm saying, like, uh, normal girlfriend around the house, you know what I'm saying, we had kids and stuff, family and stuff, right, you, know? Right, right. you know, we, I really just, like, try to keep all that stuff outside, you know, keep everything as normal as possible when I'm in the house, you know. Yeah, how y'all meet? So she hit me up through a, a mutual friend. Okay, uh, so she know? had been kind of checking you out. I guess. <laughs> yeah. I was coming to LA. Yeah, yeah. You know, I just got traded. You know, it was on, probably on the news out in LA, something like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, she hit you up. Yeah, okay. Did you ever, being such a like laid back guy, did you ever have reservations about dealing with somebody who's such an outspoken reality star? Uh, no, not really. I just, whatever I like, I just attract to whatever I like and just deal with whatever comes with it. You know, you got to understand that craziness. I mean, I mean, that's the only type of woman I've ever been around or seen. Crazy women? I mean, yeah, man, like yeah, my, yeah, my yeah, mama's yeah, side yeah. of my family on Money you Street, mean. you go over there, like all my cousins is girls. Like, yeah. like this wasn't nothing. So I know it, it seems strange that a baseball player might, might indulge in that type of personality, but that personality was pretty much the norm for me my whole life. Okay, <laughs> I, I seen I seen yeah. an interview from somebody I can't remember who, but I remember in that interview they said at the end of the day they feel like it's best for people who's famous to always stay with famous people. Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel like that? I mean, if they both you know uh, like the situation, like for me, I didn't really you know it's too it's a lot come with it sometimes, so it can get like it can get overbearing, but. Um, I guess it just depends on two people really want to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. For sure. So y'all was together for about four years. You got engaged. Mm -hmm. You did. Right. Okay. But y'all ended up breaking it off. Right. Do you, what was the reason for breaking it off? Oh, we just decided to part ways. You know, yeah. just you know, we're working. She decided to go her way. I decided to go mine. Co-parent with the child, and mm -hmm. um, that's pretty much it. Try to keep it cordial as possible. For sure. Yeah. On a scale of one to ten, what do you give the overall relationship? Uh, with me and Evelyn, um, say about a seven or eight. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. For sure, for sure. That was up. And I asked this not because I'm Wendy Williams, but because right. I asked what people want to know. You right. know what I'm saying? For sure. For sure. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> now, I definitely got to get into 1501 Certified. Show me. 1501 Certified. Carl Crawford, 
like a motherfucker. You, what is, what is, is it safe to say that you can credit yourself for discovering Megan Thee Stallion? I mean, it's safe for me to say it, you know, yeah. others might think or say otherwise, but, you know, like I say, shit, we put that, we put that, we put that, that pop to it. Like a motherfucker. Yeah, we put that gloss on, like, you know how they say, put that, put that <laughs> gloss on it? We put that gloss on it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Man, from, from a Houston, I guess, media outlet, everything from just the streets, that's what we see you at. Right. You know what I'm saying? We pop, you see pop. See as what? The nigga who who popped the hottest female oh, artist yeah. from Houston, right. and Houston has such a rip, rich rap history, but we never the streets think that. Yeah, really, really? Yeah. we never had that female artist. We never had Eve got is Philly. Mm -hmm. We got uh, you know Mia X or whoever's and no uh, right. you know Katrina Miami. Right. You know what I'm saying? But Megan is really on a different level. Yep, she went up there. She went up up. Yeah. You know, up up, and that was that was what. The plan was all along, you know, yeah. like, like yeah, you get excited when you see it, but I've come from baseball where um, I've been around all the celebrities. I played at Dodger Stadium for four years, so it ain't no celebrity we ain't seen. So, you know, her getting to this level doesn't like, uh, you don't get like wild by it. You just want to take care of business with it and take advantage of, right. you know, something like this happening so fast, you know. For so, sure. How did you discover Megan Thee Stallion? I discovered Megan Thee Stallion on Malaya Page on my on my on my Malaya the dancer. Malaya the dancer, okay. yeah. You know, I only had like a hundred followers at the time. Had just turned on the IG because I didn't even like IG Instagram or nothing. I didn't have none of that stuff, you know. And um, just started following rappers and strippers. And, um, That's a good way. <laughs> and, um, you know, she posted on her page one day, and I saw her. You know, and then I took a to my people with the acts about her and you know that's how we got the ball rolling on that. You know, sure. she I thought she was dope, she was rapping, you know, and then, you know, a couple other videos she was dancing. And, you know, I um I just had never saw, you know, so they the girls doing that. So For sure. Yeah. Streetwise, a lot of people from Houston say that Megan Thee Stallion stole just Britney Lane. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I guess you could say that. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if she stole it. She just, she just went in there and jumped in there. But um, you know, I think, um, um, yeah, what well, it, it did become a lane. I guess the what, what lane is that? Really, the lane is like, like Beyonce yeah. represents a certain type of woman that's abundant and used. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And Megan also represents like. A certain type of woman that's abundant in Houston, like that right. whole that right there. hood. Yeah, so it's tall, like it's like yeah, I get it. You know what I'm saying? She she got the the stripper rap. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, whatever Jermaine the Free called it. Yeah, cause yeah. yeah, I can see how they'll say that. You know, I never thought about that, but yeah, I can I can understand how yeah. some people might think that. For sure, man. For sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So with Megan Thee Stallion, popularly known, is that matter of fact, I want to rewind, and this is more on. You as a person, as a businessman. Right. When Megan Thee Stallion, I would say middle of 2018, mm -hmm. got signed by 300 Entertainment. No, that was at the end of 2018. End of 2018? Yeah. Okay. Megan Thee Stallion got signed by 300 Entertainment. But really, 1501 as a whole made a made a basically a deal with 300 Entertainment. Right. You know what I'm saying? That I feel like that was the moment that the world started to realize, like, this is the... The female rap chick. Right. You know what I'm saying? But what stands out most about that time and that, that publication is when I honed in on Instagram, <clears throat> you know, she was getting so much love, so much love, so much love about signing with 300 congratulations. Right. But then when I looked at your page, the love wasn't there, but you made a post saying, hey, it's funny how everybody congratulating Megan. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, but, you know, it's, it's that... It's that Houston stuff, man. You know, coming up in Houston, we all competitive with each other. We all, you know, trying to do well. And it's like this in every city, to be honest with you. I ain't going to say that. It's always with your hometown. Um, you know, Megan has the personality that everybody like. And so, um, she, 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 you know, she a girl. She got, you know, whatever. So, of course, niggas going to put the hearts up or just, you know, show love. But for me... It was more so that it, I came home, I was playing, you know, I already just made this type of money, 
So now I'm coming in, I'm winning in this game, and it was kind of, I understood that people felt a certain way about me winning again, you know what I'm saying? Because they felt like, you know, why I'm coming in this lane, you already won, and then you're going to throw it in our face and say, how are you doing this? And I really wasn't throwing it in the face, I was really just trying to show, um, you know, how we, how we, uh, you know, got better and progressed during time, you know, and, and uh, you know, just this rap game bringing like a lot of hate and envy when you're doing well. So it was like, man, shit, we ain't, we ain't, you know, we just going to go to her page. We ain't even going to let them. But it's like 15 on one is who signed the deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For real. And, and yeah. going even going back to the post scene, when you, when you posted that, it made me hone in more on you as a business person. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. So, um, yeah, like I said, for, for whatever reason, you know, love wasn't, wasn't as much on my page as it was on hers, but um, she's always been that way. She got more followers. Yeah. Uh, but I, I feel like that, that the lack of love at that point, it really benefits you. How so? You know what I'm saying? Because even flying under the radar to, to be the person who's really running some shit or making moves mm -hmm. and fly under the radar, it I personally, because I've been there in that position before, mm -hmm. and it gives you the, like, kind of, like, leeway to make better moves. Yeah, so man. when they do really record, it's like, damn, you can't even fuck with it. Yeah, but, I mean, we had did so much to get up to that point right there. Mm -hmm. You know, that it was, just, it was just time for everybody to get noticed what was going on. Like I said, man, we... Did a lot of moving her around before early on, investing early on. Like, like I said, and she was like, um, I invested over a million dollars in this girl. You know what I'm saying? So, shoot, we were, we was ready to, yeah. we was ready to all just get our, get our, get our, you know, shine on. With with <laughs> that much of an investment, yeah. Do you, at the at the way it pans out from her signing with y'all, you signing with 300, all the transgressions that happen, even. The, the Rock Nation thing that I want to talk about a little bit right. with that. At the end of the day, I would, let's say a year from from when that first really started to kick up, do you feel like, from investing that much money, that million, do you feel like there was a good investment? From from investing that type of money? Yeah. yeah I think it was a great investment, as right. we all see. Right. You know, I was right about my investment. So, um, it was just gave me the confidence to want to keep being in the business. And like I said, I didn't want to have to get back into baseball until my kids start playing I gotta start practicing with those guys and stuff like that when you get older but um you know I, I had set out to do what I wanted to do and I did it and it just was a great feeling at the time but it was like you know maybe I don't know I, don't, I just don't know how I rub people the wrong way sometimes but it's not by me doing nothing on purpose to be is it safe to say that through the the success of Megan the Stallion also brought a lot of friction that you kind of, you know, wasn't. Well, I mean, it was like from what I was told, like so many people have been trying to do this for a while. I kind of came in and did it real fast. And, you know, just some people felt a certain way about it. You know, like I said, it just felt like I was winning too much. I already did this and did that. So for whatever reason, you know, and then they just don't take you serious. Like, you know, so many people start new labels, but they just, you know what I'm saying? Nobody ever takes them serious, you know. So I guess this is one of those cases where, Oh, another athlete spending money to get into the game. Um, but you know, not giving you respect. But even, I thought that, I, I understood that coming into it, but even after, so afterwards, um, once we did it, I was like, okay, once we get our respect, I thought things would get better. But it was like, it was just like, you know what I'm saying? But I understand why now a lot of that stuff, but at the time, I just didn't really understand that. But um, for whatever reason, we just had it, had had a struggle, you know? Yeah. And, and this makes me want to like do like a uh, James Harden kind of step back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you spoke on Houston earlier, right? You know what I'm saying? You spoke on you know kind of how it is the, the way of navigating Houston business, even though Houston is the spot. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Back on Megan, when I think about it, I really think about it like you think about mainstream artists coming from Houston, other than Beyonce. You know what I'm saying? And Houston is known for the entertainers, known for the women. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Rap game wise, Beyonce, not Beyonce, but Megan Thee Stallion is really the first and the only since Beyonce to be that type of female artist to really take, you know what I'm saying, shit by storm. Come big out of Houston, right, right. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? And and that's really something that Houston 
has been needing for a long time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And coming from what you're telling me, that seems like your vision. Yeah, I just wanted to bring something to the table that we had never seen before. I just knew that that was the only way it was going to win. I knew that, you know, time, like always, repeats itself. It's going to be another wave at some point. And um, I wanted to be a part of it. So, you know, I was able to catch it. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to be a part of the next big thing out of Houston. That's what I was thinking when I left baseball. I was like, you know, whatever it is, I want to be the, I want to be a part of the next big thing. Mm. And uh, so I just, from that moment on, started trying to figure it out. Mm. And um, I was like, man, we never had a girl rapper, not a, not a major one, you know, not not one that, that um, you know, that was just huge. You know? Yeah, on the level of, right. of Cardi or on the level yeah. of, you know, what I'm saying whoever. Right. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. In, in that regard, do you ever feel like you don't get enough credit for what you have done? No, I think people around Houston, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, like credit me. Not like everybody knows the story now, you know. So it's like, no, you know, everybody know what what happened, uh, what the story is. Like more on a national level, you know. Probably not, you know, because um, they they had they they drawn that in, and of course she comes out and say nobody nobody, you know, she made herself and. You know, people, you know, really believe that. Yeah. National wise, nobody in Houston believe that, but you know, outside of Houston, everybody yeah. believe it, you yeah. know. And and that's like the nature sometimes of artists. Like you, you know what I'm saying, not even just talking about Megan Stein or fifteen one. When I do research wise, that's the nature of an artist, especially those who get that good backing and then get that burst into the game. Right. That's the nature of an artist that they they go rogue at some point. Yeah, they, you know they, I mean, yeah, we were told that, and I understood that situation, and um, it's, 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 you know, it's disappointing and sad that that's what happens most of the time, but, you know, we was kind of, I kind of expected it, I just didn't think it would be like this, you know, but um, at some point we knew we would go there, but we didn't get in the business to just be looking for one artist and following one artist around everywhere and doing whatever they do and, you know, um, waiting on them hand and foot. Like, I didn't get in this business to be nobody's servant, you know? So, um, you know, it was supposed to find a new artist or sometime. We want to have, I signed 10 artists. Right. You know what I'm saying? People only know Megan because she's the only one blew up. But, you know, I had 10 artists. But she wasn't just the only one we was focusing on, but she's the one who took off. And, yeah, we had to, you know, uh, follow that for a while, hoping that it'll be more come behind them. We never, my idea was to never just, you know, like, like you know, be like a servant or something. You know, like mm-hmm. what, what she expects out of everybody, now. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I I, I just want to say shit. I mean, if the city doesn't give you credit, I just want to say. Uh, usually, I say at the beginning of my interviews, it's an honor and a privilege to have you here. But right. it's an honor and a privilege not only to have you here, but to listen to you say that. You know, what I'm saying, especially in the regard of being the guy who who broke that female artist. Right. You know, what I'm saying, and if you don't get credit in that regard. Green room wise, you know what I'm saying? I get, I, I want to go ahead and take, man. My, take man. my hat off. Man, to you, that's man. All I love, man. Yeah. You know, I appreciate it. That was really uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, like they're going to talk about this 20, 15, 15, 20 years from now. They're going to talk about this here. Um, so you have to be real careful about your role and what you're doing it because just like we talk about all the other Houston stories, there's going to be one of them one day. Yeah, so it's definitely. like, well, yo. What's, your, what's going to be your place in history when right. I talk about you? So I, I'm always conscious of that. This is why you see me talk about what's going on and what really happened because I refuse to let somebody like take my name and my hard work and just say I had nothing to do with it. I wasn't a part of it. We didn't do nothing. Like yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy to me. I don't care how many hotties get mad, how many people nationwide that think they know what happened here get mad. I don't care because uh, this is my story. Man. And for y'all to try to say I didn't do nothing or discredit what I say, man, I'm, I don't care about what your fan base say. Of course, they going to out me out. You got all those followers, and I only got so many. But, but you know, if they knew how much I didn't give a damn, they probably wouldn't even say nothing to me because, you know, it's, it's just we, we just put so much into getting it to where it was at. You know what I'm saying? That took a whole lot of energy, sacrifice, and stuff that... You know, people just on my level don't come back down to do for people. You know, yeah. and that's why, <clears throat> that's why you know I talk about it as much as anybody asks about it. Yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, and, and I, I, I want to. I had so another question set up to go as I'm listening to you, but when you say how people from your level don't come back down, yeah, do like thing. come on, man, like my, you know what I'm saying? I'm like you said, I told you my contracts and stuff like that. And I'm way gone, like, you know what I'm saying? Like to come back to your home city and try to help people that you know. I know that black people don't really play baseball, so I wanted to go into an area where I know black people do something like mm -hmm. music, entertainment. That's how you can help make somebody a star, just like a man help me when I was a kid and gave me a chance to be, become a great athlete one day so I always wanted to do that back for my city come back home and you know just treat people like they was family and um, um but I mean you know like they say like they say the good guy gets punished all the time all this the business time, man. <laughs> like the man, you know? man understanding the way like the social media hip-hop culture everything goes it's so much of an emphasis on how much money you make. Right. But I always known, and I was told once, that how much money you make doesn't really determine your character, is your industry, whatever you do, is how many people you help. Right. Right. And that's the main thing I take from you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Coming from Fifth Ward. Yeah, I yeah. just, like I say, like, coming from Fifth Ward like that, coming from Fifth Ward like that, coming from nothing like that, like, you will never forget that feeling. You know what I'm saying? You always remember that feeling. It goes with you. It's the thing that drives you even when you wake up in the morning. You never want to go back there. Also, you also want to, if you have a chance to take somebody out of that type of situation, you know what they're going through. You can relate to all that stuff. You know, and it'd be surprising that people know I'm a baseball player. They don't understand I came from the hood so I can relate to these. They don't understand how I can be hanging around certain people. And I'm saying y'all don't understand that because you just don't know me, you know. And so when I see a situation where a guy might have a chance to better their life and I can help him do it, I try to help the best way I can, yeah. you know. Yeah. But um, like I say, it's, you know, it's just, that's just how I'm built. You know, I just always wanted to, to, to help others because I know that's how you get your blessings at the end. Yeah, like you know? First 1501 interview I ever did, December 2000. 18, right. I interviewed Hallelujah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah, uh, if I thought he was the first 1501 artist, but I did my research. But Hallelujah, when I asked him about his 1501 experience, he told me. Yeah, and it is for the, and it was for the city. Mm -hmm. It's like whoever, you know, you got to understand. Yeah, you don't miss nothing, bro. Whoever, whoever, whoever. Because I might, you know, I'm, and I'm speaking, I guess, it's from him. Like, you know what I'm saying? I might have given that opportunities. Mm-hmm. I'm just passing the mic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm out here, you know what I'm saying, passing that yeah, opportunities. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And bread. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, they gonna recognize those. So it's like, oh, yeah, they, they do because they've been following the formula. And I'm still speaking yeah. as him right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, you got you got to understand, nigga, doing it for everybody. Because, nigga, I already, like, trying to. Really set a tone. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and then, and then, like, Respect, man. And then people come to the studio, like the headquarters. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The safe haven. You know what I mean? The mm -hmm. cave. Yeah. bringing people into that, to that lifestyle to really see what's going on. You know what I'm saying? The main thing he took from you is that, that you're trying to help people. And that when it comes to opportunities, you really point guarding them hoes. You really... Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I just, like I said, when I came back home, I I um, I um had a plan on what I wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? I had a little nephew that was rapping. You know what I'm saying? He, um, like I said, I wanted to get into rap game, but he was rapping. And uh, he was telling me how he was doing this. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm going um, to get a studio. You know, from Hardy Street and everything. So I got a studio, all that type of stuff. And uh, next thing you know, he go to jail. You know <laughs> the rap game way, man. You know what I'm saying? So he gets locked up for like two and a half years. Damn, man. For okay. a long time. Get out, man, we on top of making the stallion. You That's know what crazy. I'm saying? That's crazy. That's crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? Like and it's like, um we just we just came here, we was just giving opportunities and um that's that's that what was going on. For sure, for sure. All right, but now before, I, like, one thing I really want to hone in on, too, is, is the future of 1501. You know, I feel like I kind of got the story. I want to hone in on the future, new artists, everything. But before I go into that, I want to I wanna step back on the Megan, mm -hmm. and then I want to go more so on 
the newer artists that you got coming up. You know okay. what I'm saying? Gotcha. So when Megan signed with Rock Nation, you know what I'm saying? Right. When Megan Megan signed with Rock Nation, you weren't you weren't privy to it. You didn't know it was about to happen. Right. Okay. Right. How did you feel when you first found out she signed with Rock Nation? Well, I mean, I really didn't know how to feel because, for one, like people say, she didn't have to tell me, right? She mm -hmm. didn't have to tell me. But, you know, the guy that I was dealing with between her, who was the, um, you know, the in-between guy between me and her, communication, really. And that's another area where I, I messed up in, you know, my communication wasn't really good with her. And I had a dude in the middle that I trust, you know, trying to keep things right. He tells me that she just going, to, they just going to look around the building, you know, they Puma stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like right, some right. dumb shit, you know. So I'm thinking they just finna, she just finna visit Rock Nation, and they finna like just like, um, you know, whatever. Right, <laughs> and they right. say, you know, I look on the internet, I get on a plane, you know. When people, I like to clear that up. When people try to say that I went and got Lil J because she signed with Rock Nation, that's not, you know what I'm saying? That's not. Tr they try to say she signed with him. And that's why uh, I went and got Lil J. That's not true. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I got I went and got Lil J because she went and got certain lawyers that came to me before I knew she was with Rock Nation. You know, I didn't know these lawyers had nothing to do with Rock Nation. You know, I just knew it was Megan's lawyer. And they came and they told me, you know, pretty much put a gun to my head, told me it was a stick up. You see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. So this is why I went and got Lil J. Mm. We ended up signing what I did with him. And not knowing nothing about this stuff that happened. And the actual day I saw, and we post with Lil J, I post a picture. We post a picture, get on a plane, and then I get up and I see, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> see, son, to Rock Nation on the plane once, you know, once I get off the flight. Right. So it's like, I'm getting all these acts. Like, oh, yeah, that's what your, that's what your bitch ass gets. She left you. Like, oh, all kind of hate mail, you know what I'm saying? Just telling me like, and I'm sitting like, damn, what's going on? Like, what they mean? What they talking about? You know what I'm saying? Right. Even when I'm looking at the, when I first looked at the picture with her and Jay-Z, I was like, shit, that's cool. That's you know cool what I'm us. saying? That's, yeah. Like, she with Jay-Z. So then, next thing you know, I'm looking at all the stuff about, yeah, she left you, that's good, your artist gone, whoop the whoop, and I'm saying, damn, I really didn't know what happened, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, damn, is she gone? You know what I'm saying? Like, I kind of, just sat in the moment because I was like, I really didn't know what was going on. Right. And so um, I said, shit. So now I'm, they at me and I'm seeing Megan them saw all this stuff, you know what I'm saying? And nobody, she's not clearing it up, like saying what's going on. And But she she's a, um, she see everything on Instagram and media when somebody coming, you know what I'm saying? So I know you saw it. So you're not trying to clear it up and tell these people what's really going on. You're making it look like you really did leave 1501 mm -hmm. to go to Rock Nation. And you ain't coming in my defense or nothing. So shit, hell yeah, I spoke up for myself. Right, and right. then, so from what I understand, from me speaking up, saying that our own shit still was what pissed her off and made her mad. But that's another story. I feel like they just wanted me to like say yeah. say something and have a reason to be mad at a nigga. You know what I'm saying? But... um. Technically, they basically try to bully out your artist. Yeah, you know, so she do that. So now I'm just learning what's going on, and I'm like, fuck. You know, so I'm like, you know, Jay, what's going on? Like, is he gone? Like, I, don't, I really didn't know because, like I say, I had a dude in the middle that was supposed to have been buffering things and taking care of things for me. You know, he turned out to want to be a dude that you can't trust, that was positioning himself the whole time when I'm thinking that he was... You know, you know, ride for me. You know what I'm saying? He was looking at her position, trying to be her manager at the time, and wasn't giving a fuck about 1501. Okay. So now, when the, you know, when the gun to come to my head, it's a stick up shit. I mean, hey, if you ain't shoot me while I'm down, you don't let me. You don't tie the ropes and let me go. I'm finna shit. What you think I'm finna do? You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah, you so gotta express yourself. That's pretty much what's going on, and uh, you know, and then from that, that's just when. Everything started, you know, yeah, yeah. everything just started from there, never spoke to him enough. The crazy part about it is that, like, we was just with him, like, two days before, you know, but, we in Houston. Never, like, I never knew. Then? Yeah, I never, since then? No, I never spoke to him since then. We just with you two days before, like, in Houston, everything all good. Like, so that tell me you already had this stuff planning for me, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know nothing about it, but you was already finna attack me in a way that I didn't think was cool, but... You know, people can, you know, you got the hotties that want to cry and say, oh, I'm bitter and all this type of shit. But I'm saying, put my, put yourself in your position when you just know 
what you just did. You went and spent all this money on this girl. The whole city of Houston know that I spent over, well over a million dollars on this girl, just doing all kind of stuff. Never told her no one day in my life. Always said yes to everything. Gave you everything you ever wanted. And then you um and then you just send your lawyers and me to take everything. I just felt so disrespected by the whole situation. Now people can say, yeah, that's business, that's the music game, welcome to the music game and all that shit, but you know, <laughs> I just thought she was more solid than that. I thought that being from Houston, Southside, third back then and all that <laughs> shit, I thought that shit really was real, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not thinking she would ever do this because I made it my point to never disrespectful, never do nothing. I still, to this day, don't know what I did to them. They don't even have a reason, you know, other than some shit they trying to say. Uh -huh. Stealing money. What, what I look like stealing money, man? Come on, man. I ain't need to steal no money from you. We gave you everything she ever asked for, you know. But we made the mistake of letting 300 pay for everything, you know. Who wouldn't take that type of offer where they want to pay for everything and they just turned out to be the type of people that you know if you're not if you're not paying the money on their day to day or doing something like that you know what i'm saying if you're not the money person that's actually mind you i didn't need 300 to pay for my stuff you know i was doing fine just without them you know we got with 300 hoping that you know just to blow her name up more <laughs> but you know they uh you know she just turned out him her the two together they turned out to just be like people who, you know, chasing the money, and that's cool. I get it. We chasing the bag, we chasing the bag, music. whatever the check is, whatever. But this was a situation that was designed to where everybody was getting what they wanted. You know what I'm saying? Like, like she was the star. This guy here was gonna be whatever he was, and I, you know, can be an executive in the music business. At the but end they of the just day, wanted, it's, a, it's, a, it's a heavy learning. Experience. Yeah, it was. You know, it was cool. So they just wanna, they just wanted me out. For some reason, okay, you know, okay. they just want me out for yeah, whatever so. reason. I don't even. I still don't think they got no. Really, they gonna say I'm talking on the internet now, but this all after the fact that you sent your lawyers with me, with the with the gun pointed to my head. So, um, you know, like I said, it was a learning experience. You learn not to trust people because, like I said, the guy that the guy that did this to me, he, I, I moved this guy to my house for a whole year, took care of him all year long. <coughs> Fed and food, bought him cars, got him jewelry, all kind of stuff, all so he can just go run off and like leave me in the barn. You know what I'm saying? And I got just plenty of stories like huh? I got plenty of stories yeah, like that. Yeah, so it's like it's like, man, you know, but sure, I just I just had never had nothing like that drastic happen. I just felt like I would never do that to nobody. I don't care what the situation was. If somebody really helped me like that, like like you hear me telling this story about uh, the old man that helped me, like, um, you always like that with me. Mm -hmm. But I get it. Reports come back. I want to be a star. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Which, I mean, I was a five time all star, but you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I want to be a star. With the typical Houston sh hating shit. Well, they feel like I'm trying to I shine too much or. Um, I don't know, whatever the case may be. I mean, you know, I have fun out there. Yeah, I try to. You know, do my thing or whatever. But yeah, uh, at the at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying. That's that typical Houston shit. Yeah, just right. shit where it's just you want to be the main one. Like it's like I don't, I never understand it. Man, I come from a team sport where it's 25 other guys. Mm -hmm. You have to help the other guy at all times. So That's interesting. I just never could understand why why it always have to be like some Houston type shit where. You know, and I don't even want to say it's Houston shit. I just think it's hometown shit. I think in other places think that Atlanta and all that stuff good, but when they when they they have the end fighting as well too, but they still capitalize a little bit more. But for us, it's like you got to be the top dog, or yeah. you can't you can't have nobody up under you that's even close. I got to be the one. I got to be the man. Like I just didn't believe that, and I set up a system to show that everybody can get what they want, and it actually worked. How many times? You set up something like this, and it, everything you, goes you perfect. Set up, you set up a you lot of opportunity saying? for a lot of rappers. Yeah. yeah, like it went perfect. You know, and they just messed it up. Just like, well, I ain't gonna say they messed it up. We it's not messed up, okay, you, but I'm just saying that situation got, you got, you got still messed. Got your control. Yeah, you I still got control. You can do what, what I'm saying is they messed it up. Just what we had with that part. You know what I'm saying? Right, like right, it was right. no need to like be like that. You know what I'm saying? You could have just talked to me. I could have made simple adjustments to the contract that you probably would have wanted. You didn't have to come in like. 
like you like a gangster or something, and we know you ain't about none of that. You know what I'm saying? And it's just that. It's just sad that it's gonna be the story that back here, I don't care how big she be, whatever, and whoever try to come bash or say whatever, you know, at the end of the day, it's just a sad story because it's just, I mean, it, would not, it wouldn't be a sad story for her if she keep going, or if I, you know what I'm saying, don't do what I'm supposed to do, then I guess it would be, and they wouldn't care, but, you know, it's just one of those, another Houston stories that I was just yeah, trying yeah. to avoid. You right, know right, 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 right. I feel, I feel your whole you know, story and your whole projection, how you're yeah, trying to help the city. You know, they 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 say stuff like, you know, I didn't do nothing but spend the money. You see what I'm saying? And I'm saying, but shit, bro, you had contacts. You had you had the same contacts. I used your contacts. You had the same contacts before I came and it wasn't working. You know what I'm saying? Now all of a sudden I come and now it's working. And, um... And you want to say I didn't do nothing but spend the money. Like, that's so easy. <laughs> Spending the money was easy. All y'all would have been doing it already, you know. And it's just like, uh, say say we trying to steal from you or, or whatever the case may be about whatever we got going on. Man, we gave this girl 40% of her royalties Damn. up front as a new artist. You know what I'm saying? Like, go find. Like, you don't find nobody getting that just from a new artist buzzing right out. Like, we... We show love all around the table. Like I said, when I told people I give her 40% of her royalties, my folks look at me like, what? I mean, yeah, she's big now, so it don't sound bad. But when you just got one freestyle right, and we right. give you 40% of this thing, you're like, come on, man, we show major love. And you want to, you want to like, you want to handle me like that? Right. Nah, I'm going to say something. And if I got to go out talking, then that's just the way it's going to be, right. you know? Um. I think personally, I think it's more of the formula than the money that was behind it. Right. But this is a question I had. Uh, con contractually and technically, right. even though y'all haven't communicated, 1501 still getting paid. Right. Well, you know what I'm saying? Right now, dude, with the show money, they holding all that. But, Damn, you know, man. we waiting for, like, like royalties and stuff like that. You know, 300 have to recoup all that stuff. And right. then, you know, we get, we get ours. But, you know, we still waiting for that right now. So, it's like they just... They don't want to. They don't want to pay up with the show money. I guess they want to renegotiate and all that type of shit. But I think it's gonna be alright though. Huh? I think it's gonna be alright though. I hope so because I feel you know, like it will be. Though. I want to cut my ways. I want to get out of this situation. Like let's cut apart. You know what I'm saying? Like get me from connected. Buy me out. Yeah. Like I don't want to be connected to y'all people. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not gonna just let you take everything and I don't get nothing, you know, so it ain't finna go like that either, I know she used to getting everything she wanted, and she got all those yes men around her, telling her this and that, telling her that, but they ain't keeping it real with her and letting her know that, shoot, we just not feeling like, just finna let you take everything, you know what I'm saying, crazy. That's what's up, I feel yeah. like you should stick to your guns though, but yeah. I feel like it'll work out though, eventually, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully, you know, but I don't know, we'll see, you know, it's gonna go bad for one of us. For sure. Hopefully, you know we on the winning side. I, I, you know I, I want. This is a question I wanted to ask, but I can tell from from everything that you said that this is a no go. But I always wanted to ask this: Makes Megan Thee Stallion is so sexy to so many artists, so yeah. many people. She money back yo Trey songs. As a CEO, as a businessman, did you ever find that as a distraction with all the sexiness going on? Because most what men, you mean were, like a distraction though? Most most men who is a CEO would kind of like kind of like try Rick, right. Huh? What you mean? Like, kind of like Rick Ross said. He said the reason why he never had an MMG artist because he'd be too tempted to fuck on her. Like, too tempted yeah, but to see, I played into all that. I swear, I'm not, I ain't just making this up. First off, I watched, you know what I'm saying? I just, no business. Watched enough movies to know, you know what I'm saying? Music for music to know every time you try to do something like that. Um, black, it, black yeah, fire. It's Those just bad. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, out the gate, I knew that. I knew that, you know what I'm saying? I knew that, shit, I was not going to be um, one doing them, that. You one know what I'm niggas. saying? Yeah, I knew I was not going to be doing that. I'm going to be able to say, oh, he mad because, you know, this and that. No. It smart. was never, it was never nothing business. like that. I never tried to talk to her, nothing. If she say anything, otherwise she lying. But I knew that everybody else, I knew no other... I knew no other rapper or CEO could have did it though. You know what I'm saying? I agree. And that's why and that's why I knew I was gonna win. I said these niggas gonna think 
that it's my new girl or something I got with me. And, you know, of course, everybody want to try to fuck your new girl or all that type of shit. So they finna just be like on some, you know, whatever type of shit. So, you know what I'm saying? They gonna eat her up. It's gonna be, you know what I'm saying? It was like I knew, you know what I'm saying? Whether take her to, I knew. That's good business. All that type of shit. I knew that her standing, what we was standing, was gonna make everybody just want to be interested. You know what I'm saying? Like a month. So, um... So yeah, we turned up like that, and it worked, you know. So it went my girl. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm glad y'all, yeah, y'all, yeah. y'all turned up in the city. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, this is this is James Harden step back and on the, the yeah. Evelyn, Evelyn Lazada thing. I kind of seen your type, so yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> she, come on, man. Come on, dog. You All right, check this saying? out, man. Check this out. Who, who, who was the first artist ever on 15175? I think it was Hardy Boy Pig. Yeah, 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 I think that's who it was. I thought it was Ruler, but yeah, it was Hardy Boy Pig. But they was, and uh, he was in jail, you mm. know. Uh, he was locked up. You had Enzo McFly for a little while, yeah, too. Yeah, I had him, too, for a little while. He, like, asked to get out of his contract and all this type of shit. Okay. okay. You know, so we let him out of his contract. Okay. And, you know. So you retired from baseball at 16. Mm-hmm. And so basically, we just got into, so four years. How you had McFly, you had Hardy Boy, you had Hallelujah, which was my favorite. Yeah, my he favorite. was one of my favorites too. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, and I like just, how he took him out of fifth ward. Yeah, you know, know I like it. You know, he just, you know, hindsight. The dude that I was dealing with, you know, I think they had more of an issue than me and Hallelujah did. And I just listened to what yeah. he was saying and kind of, you know, made a decision on that. But at the end of the day, you know, he's still talented. You know what I'm saying? He's still rapping. Ain't no beef or nothing like that. He no longer signed with y'all though. I mean, really, he's still signed to us, though. You know oh, what I'm no, saying? No. Yeah, technically, he is. Yeah. So, I want to say this. I want to say that the, the greatest 1501 album that ever came out was Pain, Passion, and Redemption. That motherfucker. That's hard. That's yeah, a, I, cool, I like it. That's a, that's a, that's a classic. Yeah, I like Houston it. Houston classic. Yeah, I like it. He got you a little bit of saying? everything on there. Yeah, I like yeah. it. You know, it was produced by a beat maker, a few of the beat makers in... Uh, in the world over there, mm -hmm. and um, you know, they had a good little mix. He had a good little mix. He got a bunch of songs though, you know. He's a great artist. Yeah, you know, so for sure. Uh, okay, so okay, from moving from Megan, uh, Enzo, uh, Hardy Boy Pig, Young Ruler. Most of the people that you with, they you don't really have deals with them anymore. Is right. it just is there any disagreement or is it just you know business training? Yeah, just you know, what I'm saying live and learn type of thing. You know, everything was early on. Like I said, man, early on when I got in this business. I swore niggas. I gave them everything, you know what I'm saying? From clothes to jewelry to all kind of stuff. The swag, letting them come, you know what I'm saying? Pretty much, they, they little swag was giving it to them. They, everything, I just gave them everything, you know? Mm -hmm. And when you give a nigga something, you know what I'm saying? They forget what it's like to like work for something, like what it's right. like to really earn something, you know what right. I'm saying? So then the first time you say no about something, now they looking at you crazy and like, it's like you the whole ass nigga now. Sure. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, okay, I had to stop and regroup and you know change the way i was doing things for sure yeah. it, it sounds like you all since the age of 17 you've been dealing with motherfuckers that got their hand out yeah i mean you know, this is what they do when it come with her money and you want to come back and be around you know what i'm saying where you where you want to be around from but you know i'm kind of used to that but i don't really people people i just like to help people so it ain't like i'm tripping about that it's just that when you say no one time is when i don't when you have a problem with me now like a real problem just because I said no one time. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Okay. Man, going into 2020, man. 1501. Two newest artists. D. Raw. Mm -hmm. I feel like he dope. Right. And then also, K. On Lisa. Yep. We got K. On Lisa and we got, we got the swag with also and then we got Rayleigh Rose, our uh, sultry singer. Okay, I never yeah. heard of that. Yeah. So she's like more like soul R and B. Yep, yep. Yeah, for sure. Yep, so you know we gonna put a project out with her uh, this month. Okay, like yeah. an EP. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. I wanna I wanna hone more in on D Raw, but more so K on Elisa. Gotcha. K on Elisa got some shit that's gonna drop like now soon. Yeah, soon. it's coming up. We working on her project right now. And, you know she gaining more confidence by the day. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like I say, we just trying to empower women in our rap. It's a sick man rap that is only can be one woman at the top. I just don't believe that. You know what I'm saying? Because nobody ain't really tried to apply that. I feel like it can be four or five girls this hard. I mean, it's four or five niggas this hard, so why? It can't mm -hmm. be like that with the girls. Right. So, you know, it ain't no... Of, of course, people going to 
naturally, oh, she not making, what's the rumor? Yeah, no, you right, she's not making. She rap and she sing, you know what I'm saying? She got four kids and she got a husband at home that she married to. It's a whole so they, It's a whole different type of woman right. that, uh, people that you're dealing with. So I wish y'all would stop comparing. But at the end of the day, they both two people that can do well. There's no reason why, um, you know, um, Kayana can't have the same type of success making is having, you know, and they, they don't need to be no beef about it. It just needs to, all, yeah, it just needs to be. That's what it is. Cause guess what? If I see that happen, then I'm gonna go look for the third one. That's gonna get, and then the fourth one. Like she got two songs out called "Me Y'all" and "Pop Out." Yeah, I heard and, about uh, we me. We working out. on her. Uh, we working on her project right now, and uh, you know, we just gonna keep coming, coming with her. You know, uh, whether you like it or not, we just gonna keep putting it out there because we believe in her talent. Um, you know, that's, that's really sure. you said that's meow mm -hmm. and pop. Number the song is meow, meow like a cat, meow like a meow with a cat, yeah. and um, pop out. Okay, yeah, and both available on streaming right now. Both available on okay. all streaming platforms. You know, go stream that song. For sure, you know, it's just uh, those two songs. Our introduction to the world. We got more music coming ahead. For sure. And how long you think before that project? Comes, comes. Project coming out soon, you know what I'm saying? Sooner than later. Okay. Yeah. What was it? What was it about her that made you hone in on her? You found her the same way you found Megan. Yep. Okay. Instagram, no, but really she tagged me though. She kept mm -hmm. on tagging me, but what you know when she tagged me the first time, I just I just looked, you know what I'm saying? I just was monitoring, you know what I'm saying? She got my attention with the cash shit uh, freestyle she did. Mm -hmm. So um. You know, I didn't say nothing. I just watched her for a few months after that. Watched the growth, see if it got a little better. And then um, she put out another little song, and I was like, okay, let me go check it out. And so when I got in contact with her, uh, you know, we started talking in. For sure, for uh, sure. So, uh, so when you when you putting out, giving out putting out deals. Are you doing like 360 or are you working with the artists or what's going yeah, on? Yeah, we're in such an early stage of them, you know what I'm saying? We, we do 360 deals with, them, with okay. the artists early on because we come in at a time where we got to build the artists. So we got to spend a lot of money rebuilding. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we try to get in on stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. But you're yeah. putting everything into them. Yeah, we're putting everything that we, we have into it and what we think. You know, help boost her career and try to find that one song. You know, you got to help with the look. You know, it's a lot of stuff coming with those women. For sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I checked out uh, Kayona uh, once, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And just one time, one more time, reiterating, uh, Meow. Right. You know what I'm saying? Meow, the song Meow. You and know, it's a strip club bang. It's a strip club bang? Yeah, you know, girls I think I heard it. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, Pop Out. You know, Pop it's out. just okay. a, a hard song of her, her uh, you know, Arkansas. Toughness in it, you can hear that hunger when she raps, and uh, you know, like I said, she got four four miles to feed. So like you know, she yeah. she every every word come out is you know what I'm saying. She trying to she 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 rapping with a real purpose. Okay, okay, yeah, you know. All right, so future wise, when you looking forward and you looking for new artists, for anybody artists that's watching looking right now, you know, may be interested. What is it that you're looking for? The main thing that draws your attention. Like just something unique about them, something different that I ain't really never seen, you know what I'm saying? And then uh, to the skill level, uh, you know, I try to look at their look a little bit, you know, and uh, just see. Um, once I do look at them, you know, I just kind of look at the content to see if I can tell that they got a good work ethic, if they putting out a lot of stuff, how their numbers look, stuff like that. Okay. Uh, do we do we have a name for the K on the Lisa project yet? Not yet, you know, she's still... Okay. Thinking about what she want to come up with, but uh, you know, pretty sure she gonna come up with something. Yeah, definitely look out for that shit. Look, look yeah. out for that. Okay, um, man, rewinding all the way back to when we was talking about baseball, right? And everything that you you experienced music wise, you know, business partners, right. the making the stallion situation, even from on and off deals that went good with artists like Hardy Boy, everything. You know what I'm saying? Boston was your most turbulent time. You know what I'm right. saying? That it really that's like the 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 time that kind of tests you the most ever in your life. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? yeah. It was just moving to a far land, cold every day, dealing with you know uh, forty thousand uh, screaming fans every night, and just you know being really inside that fishbowl every day. You yeah. know, and it was just it was just rough. It was hard for me getting over the cold weather. I never could get over that. Yeah. The cold weather was. <laughs> a motherfucker. Yeah, yes, man. Uh -huh. Comparing that to all the things that you've been through in the music industry, the ups and downs, mm. which was harder for you? As which was more 
much more trying time in your life? Man, they, uh, um, you know, just to, I don't know, like, far as emotionally, I guess, you know what I'm saying, Boston was tough because, um, it was the first time I really struggled in my life, you know what I'm saying, and I never really had, like, a struggle like that far as playing-wise now, off the field, you know, you always had to struggle growing up, but, um, I'll just say, I don't know, I, the Boston thing was tough, but just the level of, like, this deceit from my, how I got, you know what I'm saying, how I got finessed by the dude that I was dealing with, you know Music what I'm saying, yeah, it was just, it, it was just, just like, at least I knew, you know what I'm saying, I kind of knew that that could be the outcome with it's Boston, because it's, it's tough, yeah. you meet it, you know what I'm saying, you kind of, you kind of, you know what I'm saying? No, it might be tough. It's contract. You fulfill your obligation. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But, but you don't. You know, I didn't. I wasn't ready for like the the switch up game. The fuckery, this, huh? That fuckery. That yeah, that, that man. Like at least I can see it come stand up on some like. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That it's like it's like they it's like a nigga came and hit you from behind. You know what I'm saying? Came and sucker punch you from behind, and then then a nigga take off running. Don't let you get your lick back. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? So. That's how that's how this make you feel. So I don't know which one of them is worse. I guess you have to just they both were bad, but mm -hmm. um, both life changing um, for sure. And both of them, you know, I'm I, I'm gonna learn lessons from them. So for sure. that's how I look at it. Man, music industry wise, Houston is a, it's an oasis of culture and everything. Right. And the way Houston Houston you know rap game is seeing the scene goes, you know, at the end of the day. What is your, your your final, you know, judgment? You know, because Houston's one of the most influential. Man, and, but at the end of the day, once we sort through this information or get over this situation, hopefully one day I can get on and keep going. But, you know, at the end of the day, I just want to keep continuing what I set out to do. Mm -hmm. And that was to give people from Houston an opportunity, a chance to fulfill their dreams, to become an entertainer or whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? My goal is to... The, the people like those like the guy that you know what I'm saying turns his back on me or whatever I'm I'm I want to make it my goal to erase all those type of people around here and you know what I'm saying and just be able to like know that you know what I'm saying we can still move forward and thrive as a unit or with more people and just more people can thrive and just be successful from the city yeah. I just want to get right back to this knocked me off track for a little bit but I just want every plan don't go as planned. You might get knocked off a little bit, but as long as you know where you still hit it or trying to go, then it's cool. Yeah. I'm still trying to go to where I see a place where I can help Houston people, Houston artists, you know what I'm saying, come up. I know we we, we the culture, really, and um, I feel like it's just more people that can be, that can benefit from what we have to offer here in the city, and, you know, at some point, I hope those energies connect and we all just find it again, and I want to share with the city of Houston like I did the Megan situation. Like, that's my whole thing. I want to find something. I want to share with the whole city. And, you know, we just want to, we just want to always make this place special to the outsiders and keep that name, keep that swag that, that you know, that outside of, outside of Houston people know we have and why they love it here so much. And why they like to come. To yeah, them. like yeah. they come here. Yeah. They love it here. I don't care what they say, mm -hmm. about where they from. They, everybody loves Houston, Texas. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Man, coming from Fifth Ward and yeah. then getting to the music, I'm sure you, you yeah. dealt with Jay a lot. Right. Jay ever gave you any good advice? Jay Prince. Man, like I got say, Jay just tell me, man, like at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? He ain't never like none of his. He ain't never, I ain't gonna say never like, he ain't never get along with none of his artists really liked him. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes they you all, can't be friends, though. Yeah, that's what he's saying. You know, you don't, ain't no need to want to be friends and be with around. They don't want you around. You know, don't go do what you want. So, you know, I had to listen to that because at the end of the day, being out on the road was a high, like, it's like a drug. You get on that stage, you even though like, she the one out there rapping, you know, you right there. So, um, you know, that's like a drug. I can understand why they get into me mode and it's all about me. And, you know, um, um, so they took that away from me. And I kind of feel the same way about that. But um, he had to explain that, you know, Man, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Just go find some people that want you around. And that's, that's it. That's, he did the same thing. When he was coming, he went through this same stuff. That's the funny point. All the stuff I went through, he went through this. He got even more experience as well. Well, 
he could tell me worse things than what happened with my situation. So always he always tell me something just so I, you know, I ain't the only person that this stuff happens to, and that you can't survive from it. You can't come back from it. There's no need to be the end of nothing just because one thing went left, and you know that's what I that's what I take with me every day, right. and that's what keeps me going. For sure, man. Shout out yeah. to Jay Prince, man, the father of yeah. Southern, Southern Hip Hop. That's right. Yeah, like a motherfucker. Man, shout out to 1501 as a, as a unit. Yeah. Shout out to you. Shout out to uh, uh, Kim So Major. Yeah. Uh, and R. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? Everything. Uh, <coughs> shout out to uh, to Kayona Lisa, D Raw. Who was the other two new artists that you said you had coming? Awesome. Awesome. And, um, um, it was an R and B artist, um, Rayleigh Rose. So R and B, Rayleigh yeah, Rose. Yeah. Okay, definitely go check them out. You know what I'm saying, man? I, shit, I said it once before, I'ma say it again. Yeah. It's an honor and a motherfucking sure. privilege to have you in the green room, brother. Hey man, I'm glad we finally got it finally right. Finally got it right. Yeah. For real, I've been trying to interview for a minute. Hopefully, <coughs> future wise, I ain't gonna set no date on it, but you know I want to keep up with you and be in tune and for sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I want yeah, sure. I want to I want to do like keep black, me in the street, black man. Keep me with the streets. Keep me uh, informed on what the streets saying cuz I like to know, you know. Definitely. I'm you know? I'm definitely in tune. I'm definitely in tune, definitely. Uh shit, man. Last question, man. Do you have any questions for me? Man, is that the last question? I mean, <laughs> nah, I'm just joking with you, man. Nah, uh, nah, man, I don't got no questions, man. You pretty much covered. That's why we came back, man. Right, like, right, I feel right. like I need to give it to you yeah. the right way. You know what right. I'm saying? I don't like to rush these type of talks because it'd be like so much stuff you got to leave right. out. And like I say, you know, they're going to say I'm bitter and bashing again, but at the end of the day, man, I don't care because it's my story and this is what happened. And I say, you speak your truth. People get mad at you, but it's my truth. Yeah. You know, and I'm going to speak it. And so, I'm glad I got that from you, know, you, too. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. From sports to entertainment. From right. coming from the hood, that's what most niggas dream of. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, other than being a dope boy or some other shit. Mm, that's so right. So it's important that we get your, your story. And just as far as a pillar, icon in Houston, you know, history-wise, man, yeah. you've done a lot so far for the city now. Right, and I'm man. glad I got to really see where you're at mentally because I right. respect it. Yeah. You know what All I'm saying? Right. Appreciate it. Yeah. And there you have it, man. Carl Crawford. 1501 certified, the perfect storm. Man, real quick, how you get the name the perfect storm? Cause you know what I'm saying. That's a like, baseball nickname. Yeah, it's like you, cause I did everything. Like, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. I'm, I'm gonna go rob a home run, make a dive with kids. I'm gonna steal a base. I'm gonna hit a homer. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna throw you out. It's whatever you need me to do. I'm gonna do. So they call you the perfect storm. Like a motherfucker. That's yeah. like LeBron or something. Yeah. For sure. You know, just do everything. And then you everything have they tell you to do. Yeah. Just do it. Like a motherfucker. You have it, man. You know what I'm saying?